Hello, my name is Tom Wilson, and I am the supply clergy here at St. Andrews by the Sea in Nags Head, North Carolina. This is the service that we are taping for uh, Trinity Sunday, uh, which is uh, June the 7th, 2020. Uh, our hope is to do a service outside as well, weather permitting. But if you can't make it there, then we're here. The service begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Our opening hymn is hymn number 370. The uh, first four verses, only the first four verses, we'll get to the other verses at the end of the service. But it's uh, hymn number 370, I bind unto myself today.
service continues on page 357 of the Book of Common Prayer. 357. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you've given us to us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading, the first reading is from the book of Genesis, beginning the first chapter, the first verse. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the day light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the middle, midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. And God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put, foot, put forth vegetation plants yielding seed and fruit freeze of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed within it. And it was so. And the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let there be signs for the, and for the seasons and for days and for years. And let there be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the skies to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, above, across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the sea and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind 
and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in God's own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, upon every tree with seed in its fruit, and you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything cre that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given you every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And God rested on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Turning to page 49 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us say together the song of praise, the Benedictus et Domini, the song of the three young men, page 49. So let us say this together. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwelleth between the cherubim, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the glorious throne of thy kingdom, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, praised and exalted above all forever. The second reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew. The 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain on which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The title of this uh, reflection and poem uh, for Trinity Sunday is called Reality Coming to Town. Reality Coming to Town. I'm in my ninth month with you, as they extended supply clergy. Both the vestry and I thought it would be a three or four month stint. However, it was longer. So that now, 
three weeks from now, after my labor with you is of nine months will be over, your new rector will continue in the spiritual walk with you. He will lead you and you him into how you and he and this community of the Outer Banks can live a life of faith, hope, and love together. The days that we have shared together have been filled with joys of events, opportunities, and threats of pandemics we face together. Pandemics of viruses and germs, pandemics of racism and distrust, 20th century literary critic, critic Edmund Wilson reflected, if I could only remember that the days were not blocks to be laid row on row to be built to, to, uh, to build into a solid house where, our, where I might dwell in safety and peace, but the bricks were only food for the fires of the heart, fires of the heart. Today is Trinity Sunday, and a good preacher might spend a lot of time educating you on the Nicene Creed and the development of the Trinitarian formula with the historical struggle between the followers of Arius and Athanasius. Oh, that's gonna to have to wait until another year. But let me recycle a paragraph from a reflection that I gave in December. One of my professors in social work at uh, University of North Carolina Chapel Hill School of Social Work, Alan Keith Lucas, kept telling me that helping relationships have three qualities, reality, empathy, and support. He called it a trinity as well, because reality meant giving up fantasies and pretense, replacing them with rigorous honesty, for Keith, this was like the first person in the Trinity whom, where God does not say, let's pretend, but rather says, this is the way it is. This is where you need to go. Empathy meant an act of imagination or understanding where the other person is giving. What is the other person going through? Can you understand that? Can you be curious enough about what it could be? And you'll never know exactly how they feel because each person is different. But you care enough to try. Key said that it was like the second person of the Trinity who emptied himself out and entered fully into the human life but did not sin. Support meant that you would be an outward and visible sign of the presence of the third person of the Trinity. Being with them to help them find hope, peace, and joy in their life. You could become real rather than play roles. You can have empathy with each other rather than sympathy or pity. And you can have support, meaning it is their work to do, but you are there to help. This is the first of a trinity of reflections of the coming of the new rector and having days of feeding the fires of the heart. This one is on reality. 36 years ago, I was newly ordained and had my first meeting with Pat, the woman who more than five years later I would become, my, would become my wife. I was a new boy at the diocesan gathering. The, this woman came up to me out of a group of similarly dressed women. They were huddling all together with their large scarves, all with scowls on their faces, suggesting all men are scum. She was holding a lit cigarette as she was smoking those little black cigarettes that were fashionable at the time. And she held in her hand like a roadshow Betty Davis. She comp complained about my predecessor and how her college-age son 
had left the Episcopal Church. I silently congratulated myself on giving up smoking and yet longing for a smoke. Smiled and silently congratulated myself on giving up smoking and promised that I would look him up, smiling politely. I projected a false confidence, but behind the smile, I was thinking to myself, well, lady, I'm willing to bet your son's behavior about leaving the Episcopal Church had more to do with you than it had to do with the church. Since she worked with the diocese, this was the tenor of our interactions for the next four and a half years, avoiding reality by being mutually polite, inwardly dismissive, and judging each other on the, on the basis of the projections we had on each other. Projections tell more about the person projecting than the object upon whom the projections fall. Projections also change, like having a different movie with the same actors. The change in projections come when we face the inner pain in both of us. But we lost up that moment of reality by projecting the role of savior on each other. Oh, he, she can fix me and make me whole so I don't have to work on it all by myself. It's called falling in love. It has nothing to do with reality of love, only the fiction of projection. The healing came with the daily honesty, straight communication, and openness to what was really going on with us. We became honest with each other and ourselves. And out of that, love grew. So we got to know each other and we fed the daily fires of the heart. A spiritual relationship with the Trinity, and the first person of the Trinity, is possible when we face the projections we place upon God. The creeds can be a helpful start, but we must go beyond the limits of language and we need to spend time with God. After the ritual prayers and formula are left behind, we need to talk with God, sharing our hearts, listening to God by quieting all the projections and entering into the darkness of not having easy answers, of not having a big fix it in the sky. We need to hear God calling us to faith, not only the words we recite, but in the lives we are called to lead, doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly. Love is about how we live, not just the words we speak. In my prayers, as I listen, I hear words that sometimes I really don't want to hear because it might cause a change in my life. However, God does not call for paralysis but for resurrection. A life of resurrection is only possible when we die to the past, to the dead past, and we no longer need to carry it around. A spiritual resurrection relationship with the world in which we live needs to be based on reality. We need to acknowledge that the hopes that we have had for a community of justice and equality have not yet come to be. This last week, we had to come to grips with the reality that for 400 years of American history, beginning in 1619, with the coming of the first black slaves to the Jamestown colony, we have built a society whose hallmark has been the control of and discrimination against people of color. We fought a civil war against it. We passed laws against it. But the racism that is in our hearts is still alive and well. 
It is racism in our soul. It will continue as long as we continue our practice of not having any curiosity about who our neighbors really are. We just have our projections we put on them. So we need to listen and interact with our neighbors and not just send armed troops to shut them up to enforce our racist society. Reality begins with us spending time and hope and actions and prayers with all of our neighbors to kindle the warm fires of love instead of living in the fears of the fires of rage. We need to let go of our projections of those who are our neighbors and not be drawn into maintaining divisive walls of distrust. We need to build a new society, not based on the past, but on a resurrection of a new community doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly with our God. A meaningful relationship with your new rector is going to have to be based on reality. Let go of your projections, both positive and negative. He, like every one of us, will have plenty of strengths and faults. So encourage his strength and forgive his faults as you have done for me. Share honestly with what's going on with you and your faith. Don't worry about if he will approve or not. What he and the tradition of the faith tell us is that God's love is not based on approval, but acceptance with forgiveness to all. Listen to him and his family. You don't have to waste time pretending with because all pretending does is dump asbestos on the fires of the heart. So listen to him and to his family. It's always rough getting to know a bunch of new people in a new community. Pray for them in your daily conversations with the Trinity and accept the prayers that they give for you. He may have words that you may not welcome hearing, but listen to them in the love that you have and ponder them in your heart before you respond reflexively and defensively. Ask yourself first, are these honest and painfully living words that feed the fires of our hearts? Next week, we'll be on the second person of the Trinity, empathy. This is the poem that we wrote on this called Reality Comes to Town. He looked over to the coven of anger brewing in the corner wondering when it would spill and spew on him, and then he'd end up having no peace or languor. One woman came over, cigarette in hand, to complain about a predecessor's neglect with implied judgment of a life wrecked that he'd be called to fix it, get it in hand. He smiled and promised but he worried for what was something more he feared to see. How could his life end up, change it be? But it was years later they'd be married. Still, there'll be no languor, but discerning, all was feeding their hearts, fires burning. The Nicene Creed is found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. 358. Let us proclaim our faith in the Trinity of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Together, 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, and for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We will be reading the Prayers of the People, Form 2, in the Book of Common Prayer, page 385. In the course of the silence after each bidding, the people offer their own prayers, either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Robert, for our Rector-elect Nathan, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for Jocelyn Coverdale, Claudette Smith, Pat Wilson, Linda Willie, Jean Pace, and Daniel Robinson. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers and thanksgivings for those you wish to now remember. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glory, grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Turning to page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life.
The following prayer was offered by Marjolene Herndon, a parishioner of, Saint, of All Saints of Point Loma, California in 2015 as a prayer for a new season of ministry with the new rector. And we have adapted it for St. Andrews. O oh God, as we are entering the time in this life of St. Andrews by the sea, refresh us with a new vision and help us to meet at well all our duties and responsibilities that come to us. May we show hospitality to our new rector, Forever Nathan Finnan, and his family, and welcome them with our support and prayers. Fill him, O Lord, with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and understanding. We beseech you for the touch of your spirit, that his heart may yield to you in obedience, reverence, and confidence. Endue our hearts with gratitude and love for the blessings of this new ministry that will not only give joy and comfort, but also by example and influence will lead others to love and serve you. Imperil us constantly through this new ministry to gracious acts of kindness done to others in the Master's name. And for his sake, that we become strength in, to the weak, hope to the despondent, joy to the sorrowing, power to the tempted, so that we may live that through us your kingdom may in part come and your will more fully be done among all people. Grant that your servant Nathan may find his strength and dedication from the leading of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the new opportunities that are ours. Help us to meet them with courage and trust in you. May we be filled with the gratitude of the Savior Jesus who lifts us from the burden of sin and anxiety and gather this family around yourself and protect us in the name of the one who calls us beyond ourselves, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Together, all of our prayers are summed up in the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Prayer attributed to St. Francis, found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 833. 833. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there's hatred, let us sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. The blessing found on page 311 in the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named, grant you to be strengthened with might by his Holy Spirit, that Christ dwelling in your hearts by faith, you will be filled with all the fullness of God. 
Amen. Let us sing the rest of hymn 370. That's verses 5 through 7. I bind unto myself today, St. Patrick's Breastplate. Verses 5 through 7. Hallelujah, hallelujah, life is short. And we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Go in peace, the peace of Christ and the strength of the Holy Spirit to love and to serve God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah.